Welcome back. Well, born in Zambia, grew up and was educated in South Africa, Wilbur Smith has become one of the world's most sought-after fiction writers. His first book was published way back in 1964, and since then he's written and published 37 books. Well, he was currently in South Africa, or he still is, I believe, to launch the book Desert God. Yesterday I managed to sit down with him, and uh, I'll show you in just a moment what has come out. But uh, Andile, he was such, such an amazing and humble gentleman. It was quite inspirational to speak to him. Have you read any of his books? Well, I've read quite a bit of his books. I think he's a magnificent fic fiction writer. Um, I'm yet to go and uh, get the, the new one, his latest uh, uh, offering, and see what he has to offer, but I'm sure it's quite great. But let's take a look at what you got, uh, you got up with. Ayla. After 10 years, which I'm sure must have felt like eternity for his fans, the master of historical fiction, Mr. Wilbur Smith, has finally released the next installment in that ancient Egyptian epic. Now he joins us. So I made some time for Morning Live to share with us what we can expect. Mr. Smith, a very, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. It wasn't always smooth sailing, but was it? When, when The Lion Feeds was published, it was banned by the regime at the time because it, it portrayed relationships between mixed race couples. But it's been a couple of years since then. Take us back and tell us what that was like. The first book I ever wrote was never accepted at all. It's, uh, I've got one copy of it and it will go to me, go with me in my box when I leave this world. But um, that was a huge 1,200 pages, and I put all the wisdom of the ages into it, and nobody wanted to, to buy it from me. The, f the one after that was called um, uh, uh, When the Lion Feeds, and that was um, just written about myself, and about myself as a young man, and about the history of, of Southern Africa. and. Uh, with the first five five days after the uh, publisher saw it, he t accepted it, and I was on my way. And I never went inside a uh, tax office again. Let's fast forward a couple of years. Over 120 million copies of your books have been sold. They've been translated into a number of different languages. Even movies have been made based on your work. Do you feel vindicated? And this is a two-pronged question. Firstly, because your father had wanted you to get a, quote, real job, and you've managed to show him that not only can you earn a living with what you do, but you can be world famous. And then on the second part, you sort of predicted that there would one day be a South Africa where mixed-race relationships would be a thing that is quite common. Do you feel vindicated? Yeah, I got it right, didn't I? Because look at it, look at South Africa today. It's a far cry from the South Africa of uh, Jan, Jan Smuts and, uh, and a far cry from my childhood. Um, I went, when I went to school in South Africa, I, there was no other races at all. And no Indians, no... Um, on to nothing so it's it's a it's a far cry and it's a i think a much happier and much more exciting place because the the um the south africa of my childhood was a dreary place you went to church on saturday sundays and you you enjoyed it otherwise <laughs> and um and there was not, there was no, the, the, the excitement of an interaction between different types of people. Um, but fortunately, I was not in, I was living in Rhodesia. So all, when I went home to Rhodesia, all my friends were back because the nearest white kids were 20 miles, 30 miles away. So I had the best of both worlds. Now to this uh, epic that has a lot to do with ancient Egypt, the land of the pyramids and sphinx and horse and chariot. Why did you decide to, to write about that? Well, when, uh, when I was uh, a kid, when I was, before I went to boarding school, Howard Carter and uh, Lord Carnarvon had just discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun. And the whole world was agog including uh, especially my mother. She was, because she was an artistic person with an imagination, she, she realized the significance of it. So she, before I could read, she told me about the story 
and showed me pictures of the of the the uh, gems and the uniforms and the chariots and all that sort of thing. And I thought, oh, that's my cup of tea. So I followed it up all all the uh, ex exploration, all the um, discoveries they made in the tomb. And then when um, <clears throat> when I published When the Lion Feeds, I took off from Southern Africa and went to London. But on the way, I stopped at Cairo because I wanted to see the tomb of Tutankhamun. And I went down the Nile to the, the, the tomb and I saw it and it was just as incredible as my mother had told me and as the photographs had been. So after that, every year when I went up um, north to, uh, to England or to Europe, I stopped over in, uh, in Cairo and then went down the Nile. And I got so carried away with it uh, that I started to read all the uh, books the books written by Lawrence of Arabia and anything about the Middle East. And then finally I hired myself a camel caravan, well, only four camels, <laughs> and me and four camel drivers. We went from the Nile down to the Red Sea, we went up north to the shores of the um, Mediterranean, we came round and down the Nile again, it was fantastic. And then one day I was uh, <clears throat> in the tomb of Car uh, in the temple of Karnak, and uh, all the other tourists had gone, and I was just looking at the great hyperstyle columns and everything, and I heard a little voice speaking to me, and it said, "My name is Taita. Write my story." And if you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> you had me going. Oh my goodness, you, you really had me going. Shame on you. Did you see my eyes literally pop out of my skull? I'm wondering where that voice came from, but you, you really had me fooled there. <laughs> That's how it should have happened, but it didn't. But So I decided to write uh, uh, River God, and that was 20 years ago. And now the, this is the fifth book in the series. And it's given me a tremendous amount of pleasure uh, doing this series. And I think, judging by the letters and the, uh, the feedback I've got from my readers, it's, uh, the readers like it too. I must admit, I know I'm probably the only human being in the face of the universe who has never read any of your work. My, my job lends itself more to non-fiction, but I was absolutely enthralled in Desert God, and I wanted to find out from you if somebody, you know, highly, I know, unlikely that somebody perhaps is in my position and hasn't read any of your work, is it possible for them to just pick up any of the books whenever, wherever, and read that work? Do, do they stand alone, or do you have to start from the beginning? 37 books in, in my repertoire. So any, you can pick up any one of them and start it but the, because they're complete on each book is complete to itself, but they're connected. So you can go back and read uh, uh, if you read a book a year, it'll take you the next 37 years. I know, and then I'm, I'm getting, going to be one of those people who never leave the house and always enthralled in reading your book. Thank you very much for having joined us here on Morning Live. I know you're a very busy man, so we do appreciate your time. I appreciate it, and I've had fun with talking to you. Thank you. It was a whole